welcome on the EU deal after Brexit show. Today, I will be welcoming Phoebe Ribo and I am Constance Pria, and I will be asking her some questions about her subject. So thank you for staying and being here with us. So um, after Brexit, my question is how to maintain the integrity of the single market in Ireland? So this topic is quite wide, uh, but the focal point of Brexit uh, and a huge problem that Brexit uh, caused is what about Northern Ireland? Um, there is a border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, and uh, one of the main focuses of Brexit was to avoid having a hard border being put up uh, on the Irish Isle. So it was the goal was for the land to be free of any visible checkpoints, and it was a key plank of the Brexit Accord between the EU and the UK. Uh, and in order to be able to reach those goals, there is the Northern Ireland Protocol uh, that is part of the withdrawal agreement that aims at uh, resolving that issue. Okay, so can you tell me more and tell me why is Northern Ireland an obstacle into reaching the Brexit deal? Well, following Brexit, the big problem was that the, fr the frontier, the border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland is basically the last border that the UK has with the EU. Uh, it is a physical border and it's an access point between the UK and the EU. And so without any special status, uh, checks would have to be put up uh, at, the, at the border uh, because the UA has exited the customs union and uh, the single market. So when we talk about the in internal market or the single market, it refers to the EU as a single territory without any borders, without any checks, where uh, freely can move uh, goods, capital, services, people. Uh, they're known collectively as the four freedoms. They're a main pillar of the EU. And quite, quite, quite frankly, they're one of the, it's one of the greatest achievements of the EU. So in that sense, uh, the trouble is that if we put up a hard border, or if we have to put up uh, checkpoints uh, on the Irish Isle between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, it could put in place, place delays. Uh, that will also mean uh, controlling any person trying to go through the border, any goods going through the border, any services going through the border. Uh, and it would, a, a great problem too, is that it could all be, also be the source and the target of violence, uh, having that checkpoint up. Okay, so you spoke about the border possibly becoming a target of violence, but, but briefly, what are the historical reasons of that expression? Well, it's been more than a century since Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland are uh, two different countries and there's, there's a border. Uh, but it has been... It has been problematic. Uh, between 1968 and 1998, there was a series of conflicts known as the Troubles, where uh, there were the border was targeted, and uh, uh, more than 3,000 uh, people were found dead uh, when with those conflicts. Um, and the trouble is, if you were to put checkpoints back at that place. Um, it would, be, it would be a good target for violence. And there was the Good Friday Agreement that was reached in 1998, which aimed at resolving those issues and basically could be seen as a token of peace um, uh, between the UK and uh, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Um, and so, yeah, there's the Good Friday Agreement and finding uh, a Brexit deal that avoids a hard border is extremely important because the Good Friday Agreement is at stake, if not. Thank you. So uh, how does the protocol provide a solution to the tension you just explained? So the Northern Ireland Protocol is part of the withdrawal agreement. So uh, that interforced on the 1st of February uh, 2020 after being agreed on the 17th of October 2019. And if I am to cite the withdrawal agreement in itself, uh, it's 
aims at finding a legally operative solution that avoids a hard border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland and therefore uh, protects the Good Friday Agreement uh, while safeguarding the integrity of the EU in the single market. So the stakes are high. And the uh, protocol effectively uh, keeps Northern Ireland in the EU's customs uh, and much of the single market. So that would mean basically that if a cargo, for instance, would come from the mainland of Britain and is going towards the uh, Northern Ireland, uh, it would be subjected to checks uh, in the Irish Sea. So basically what is happening now is instead of having that border, so that backdoor between the UK and the EU on the Irish Isle, uh, where the invisible border is between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, now it's been moved in the Irish Sea. So uh, it has to be checked in the Irish Sea to make sure that it meets the bloc's regulations and, um, and, and the, the measures that are applied there. So essentially, the border has been moved into the Irish Sea. Uh, but even though there's good point in the protocol, why would you say that it is controversial? Well, it's controversial because that means that Northern Ireland is getting treated differently from Wales, from Scotland and from England. It's having a special status, even though it's still part of the UK. Um, Northern Ireland didn't vote to, for Brexit uh, just to be uh, by itself. It basically has an intermediate status where it's not really in the EU uh, because it has special measures applying from the EU there and special uh, measures applying from the UK. So that's, that's why it's so controversial. And on a more practical basis, um, what that brings forward is that it creates more paperwork, it creates delays, it creates costs, because uh, we didn't need with, this, the, with the single market to have all those checks and controls. It, the, the question of a border wasn't even, well, it, there were no borders, so we didn't have to really worry about that. Um, and so um, it's, it's, been, it, it's been problematic because uh, British retailers haven't been able to supply their stores in Northern Ireland. Uh, supplies from mainland Britain uh, have stopped during all this period of uncertainty. So some food supplies weren't uh, as um, well, well provided as they used to. Um, and the UK government even uh, suggested, because a hard border would be, as, as we've mentioned historically, uh, would be so impossible to have. The UK envisioned even having uh, invisible high-tech borders with cameras checking uh, the, the, the goods and services going through and people going through the border just, just in order to avoid a hard border. So it's really quite a complicated situation and finding alternative proposals is also uh, really, really difficult. Um, and so finally, um, really it's, it's problematic in the sense that Strains, strains emerged uh, since the day that the protocol came through. It was problematic since then. Uh, and uh, we can actually, what, what, is a, what is a good, uh, what witnesses, what is a, <laughs> what bears witness of this? <laughs> For instance, is the vaccine crisis, because uh, the EU was scared that uh, Northern Ireland would be used as a backdoor for vaccines produced in the EU to go through uh, Northern Ireland and then freely be able to be distributed uh, in mainland Britain. So that was a huge problem. Uh, and they didn't want the jabs, obviously, to be distributed in the UK um, going, through, going through that border that is non-existent. Uh, so that's why a border in the Irish Sea is now what looks, uh, what is looking like the best solution. Um, and so finally, uh, on March 3rd, the British government said that it would uh, waive customs paperwork on food entering Northern Ireland uh, until October. And so that was beyond the April 1st deadline that was uh, first agreed on with the EU. Uh, and uh, the government believes that supermarkets and traders aren't ready for rules and that Northern Ireland uh, will will only be able to give its say in 2024. That's also a situation that we saw with uh, cross-border in Calais, uh, with trucks not being able to go through because the whole, for instance, for, for instance, the whole border control and paperwork hadn't been established yet properly, and it was taking much longer than, than, uh, than it was supposed to be. 
Um, another thing also is that uh, the European Commission threatened to, uh, in January, to override um, parts of the protocol in order to ensure uh, that jabs made in the EU didn't move to mainland Britain. And so they, they, that, that proposal, so that's also to do with the vaccine, uh, it, 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 it sparked outrage uh, in, in Ireland and in the UK. Uh, and the Commission came back on its word and, uh, and um, took back what they said, basically. <laughs> so unfortunately, Northern Ireland will only be able to really have their word to say in 2024. Well, we'll see you then. <laughs> thank you for answering my questions. Thank you for having me. That was a pleasure. Uh, thank you for being here from the beginning to the end. We hope to see you on other videos or on the channel, on the YouTube platform of the Media Lab. And thank you for watching. <laughs>